All right, so week eight of the NFL season is upon us. Well, week seven, definitely um, an interesting week seven. You um, have Alvin Kamara basically being the only guy for the Saints that can do anything. Chris Olave, nothing. Derek Carr, uh, Michael Thomas, Taysom Hill. I, I mean, I guess the Saints defense, you know, can do – Good things, right? They they got their act together against Jacksonville, but that was a little too late. You needed that offense to do something, anything, and the Saints' offense could not do anything. And you know, speaking of the NFC South, <laughs> the Falcons <laughs> lead the NFC South. <laughs> They're they can't use B. John Robinson right. Like this man was not even disclosed on the injury report. You know. Is if he's being injured, like, but get the Falcons lead the NFC South. You know, I, you know, Desmond Ritter turned it over what three times, but you know Baker Mayfield countered with his own interception. But the Falcons lead the NFC South, surprisingly. I don't know how. You know, um, Brock Purdy and company they lose against primetime Kirk Cousins. That makes absolutely no sense. But it happened two terrible interceptions, including the game ceiling one thrown by Purdy. And I get it, the 49ers are injured a little bit on offense again. You know, Debo banged up and CMC banged up a little bit. But yeah, I, 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 I don't get it, man. Cleveland, they benefited from some ref ball, you know, very late game shenanigans helped them win. And is PJ Walker better than Deshaun Watson? Are we really having that argument right now? Are we really having that argument right now? I mean, the, you see the surprise on my face because it just makes no sense to me. This is Deshaun Watson was like one of five, threw a pick, got knocked out of the game with a concussion, looked fine, but didn't come back in the game. And PJ Walker just did the thing yet again. Insane type of stuff. Lamar Jackson. Doing better than Deshaun Watson, that's for damn sure. Because he flexed his muscles as a passer and got the Ravens out to what a 28-0 lead. It was 35 to 6 at one point. And I mean, they, I mean, I mean, the, the 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 Ravens just smacked around Detroit. I mean, it was not even a contest. You know, I thought the Lions, you know, just they looked inept at every facet of this game. Could not get anything going on offense. You know, you had you can you know you know Jared Goff just looking looking like his former self, looking like him from years past. It was rough. It was rough, man. It was rough. And you know, Buffalo, you know, I know they don't have a defense really anymore because they're all hurt, but they need they need something. You know, with all these trades going wrong, like Kevin Byard, I think he's an Eagle now. Um like when you have a defense like the Eagles, you know, they they, they you know, that can get a win. You know, there, there's times there's times where it's like Buffalo can really do no wrong, and then Josh Allen throws a pick or something, and you know Josh Allen has what the most turnovers by a starting NFL quarterback for like pretty much for the last couple of years. He's turned it over the most, and like. The time he's been starter in the Buffalo, he's turned it over. He's turned it over pretty much every single week this season. You know, the Eagles, you know, not at the same level. You know, they don't really have any injuries. They're just inconsistent on offense. You know, they got the win they needed against Miami. It was, it was a little rough, though, you know, at times. And, you know, it, it just is what it is. Mahomes, what can I say about Patrick Mahomes, that hasn't been said already. You know, we say this every week. <laughs> I mean, the Chiefs yet again beat the Chargers. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't much of a contest this time. It, the score looked a lot closer than it needed to be. But yeah, Rep Ball again. You know, a benefit of the Steelers. Who again, I have no idea why they're four and two either. Um, you know, they're going up against Jacksonville this week, and again, Jacksonville. Good, a little inconsistent, and that's kind of the theme of a lot of these teams. You know, like the Falcons, the Eagles, the Ravens, 
needing to find consistency. Defenses, again, this year have been absolutely astronomically good. It's just these offenses have just not been cooking when they need to be cooking. You know, you know Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup, you know, it seems like it's going to be an ebb and flow type thing with these two wide receivers for the Rams. You know, one's going to get hot one week and the other's going to get hot next week, like Puka Nakua got hot this week. Like it's the Steelers and Cooper Cup have been hot the last couple weeks, so it's going to be an either-or type thing with those two. And, you know, the Cowboys have really good defense, no offense, though, so we know that. Rams, very inconsistent offense, but, you know, even they even let Brett Maher go. So, yeah. Uh, Geno Smith, another line of inconsistency here. You know, Seahawks have been very inconsistent. You know, they've had opportunities in the red zone. They haven't been able to convert, you know, especially last week against Arizona. And the Browns' defense is no joke. You know, P.J. Walker can maybe do just enough, may, or Deshaun Watson can do just enough to lead the Browns to do something on offense. And that could be enough because, again, the Browns' defense is really, really good. You know, the Niners, they're reeling, and Joe Burrow's ready to cook. You know, you know the, the the boys in Cincinnati are ready to get back on top of things. They're they're back in the mix at 500 right now. You know, we're wondering can he cook this Niners defense? We know Kirk Cousins somehow did. So, you know, it, it's going to be a matter of what in the world are we going to see from this game because this is going to be a very interesting game. Again, the the four Niners are reeling after you know, a couple of losses in a row. So, you know, they don't want to have a third straight loss, you know, that'll prove the Brock Purdy doubters. You know, I, I kind of doubt Purdy a little bit myself. Again, you know, he hasn't had to do too much. But, you know, now it's it's about the time where he's got to start doing something. So we'll see what happens this week, everybody. We'll see what happens this week in week eight as we're getting close to halfway through the NFL season. At least the regular season, anyway. And man, time flies by when you're talking the NFL. Time flies by, and week eight is going to be one of the funnest weeks, I think. At least the games that I'm looking forward to. Again, these are some of the storylines from the games that I'm looking forward to. Uh, you know, again, other teams need to find their consistency. So if you're watching, you know, Falcons, or the Eagles, or even the Ravens, you, you, this may be a you know, what you saw last week is maybe different this week. So, you know, we'll find out where these teams continue to be as we continue to look at them and, and, and see what kind of performance they're going to throw at us on the field this week. We'll see what the refs do this week because the refs were atrocious. Again, Steelers really shouldn't have won that game against the Rams like that. You know, Kenny Pickett was like a yard short. I, I genuinely don't know how. You know, same thing with college football. The, the ref ball in college football was kind of weird this week, too. But ref ball is ref ball. It screws up for everybody. So let's hope that doesn't happen this week, but it probably will. So, yeah, week eight, it's here. Let's get ready for it. It starts in 24 hours, or at least a little bit after 24 hours from now, you know, about about that time from now. So, Tulu. Enjoy Thursday Night Football and enjoy the Sunday games as well because we're going to have some good ones.